Live from the internet, it's the Dr. Tom the Frog Show! Hi-ho, this is Dr. Tom the Frog, and you're watching the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, where we talk about role-playing games! I'm super excited today. Uh, we, we have, again, the Wanachoa backdrop. I, I You know, I gotta tell you, I... I, I, I just love this picture so much. Maybe I should mix it up, you know, but but seriously, this this guy. I love this guy. All right. Uh, well, I'm excited here because we have, from Accessible Games, we have Jacob Wood. How are you doing, Jacob? I'm good, Dr. Tom. I'm happy to be here. Oh, oh, oh very good. Very good. Now, I'm curious, Jacob. Jacob Wood, are you any relation to uh, Forrest Whitaker? I am not. Oh, what about uh, James Woods? Nope. That's Robert, goodness on the end. Uh, totally Robert different plant. Sure. Robert Plant. Maybe. I'm oh, sure Leif, I'm related Leif to him somehow. Leif Erikson. I would love to be related to Leif Erikson. Oh, if only well, I were that cool. Charles Barkley. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, well, I, I could. Um, there's some resemblance, I think. I, I yeah. What about? Oh, hmm. You're a little hairy. What? What about Chris Pine? <laughs> um. Sure. All of the above, I'm sure. Oh, Somehow, man. my my family tree has a lot of branches. Very so, cool. oh, I like I like your I like your shirt there. I, I oh. like your shirt, Jacob. So, so I understand that you've got a game for um for cypunk. It's about futuristic hackers who suffer from melancholia because they're sighing all the time. Is that right? <sighs> That's exactly what it's all about. Everybody is emo, and uh, it's just a lot of boring fun. Oh man, emo is just writing sad stuff on note <laughs> cards. That sounds amazing. Or it could be a game about cyberpunks who uh, have awesome psionic powers, which I think sounds a lot more fun. Okay, a little more exciting. Yeah, I gotta go with that. So, so tell me about cyberpunks, the cybernetic psionic powers. So, so how's it go? Yeah, so um, take pretty much any cyberpunk setting that you might be familiar with, whether that's Cyberpunk 2020 or Shadowrun or, uh, God forbid, The Matrix, and um, mix in some really cool psychic powers like you might see in a movie. And um, you, you combine those two things and you mix in a bit of really cool tech that can do crazy stuff, and uh, you've got cypunk. Oh man, you, you better be careful with that the Matrix uh, slur there. You know, Trey Grisby will get on you. <laughs> well, that's I'll I'll keep that to myself next time. Okay, I I, I won't tell Trey if you don't tell Trey. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Well, this sounds pretty cool. Now, so what, was I guess you did this in Apocalypse World or Fate, right? Uh, I'm using Fudge actually. You, which you're is using. The, yep. What what is what is Fudge? So Fudge is Fate's grandfather. Um, tells fate players to get off its lawn every now and again, but mostly it's very inviting and accepting of anybody who wants to play. Um, Fudge uses dice just like the fate dice or the pluses and minus signs and the blank sides and uh, has the same kind of trait ladder feeling. Well, um, everything is described in terms of adjectives as opposed to numeric values. And... Uh, Basically, it's infinitely hackable like Fate or Apocalypse World, and that's pretty much what I did with Cypunk. I um, took a bunch of the rules that I wanted to use as part of the fudge um, system, and I put them together, and I made some for myself, and uh, wound up putting that all into a, a book. Oh, what, what's one what of your favorite rules for, for fudge to, to make it like Cypunk? What's your favorite? Oh, my goodness. So... The thing that I had the most fun with would be the psionic powers, where um, the nice thing about Fudge is that everything is very freeform. You don't have lists of powers that give you plus one bonuses here and there. You kind of loosely define the power, and then you can uh, let the players use their imaginations to tell you what it actually does in-game. And so that's where I, I really had the most fun, was just coming up with some of the core powers and seeing what people do with it from there. Oh man. Okay, cool. So, so, so that's been out for for a little while, right? But you've got something yep. new, right? I under, understand that in this one, uh, this this one is is, is we're going to see Nick Frost and Simon Pegg because it's called the World's Edge Edge Arena or Into the Ed World Edge. Something is that? Yeah. What, what so is? it's the World's Edge Arena. It is currently on Kickstarter, 
and uh, has about 25 days left as of this recording. Um, and in the World's Edge Arena, we go to um, a small town in the far south of Chile, and uh, there is a televised blood sport known as the World's Edge Arena. Um, picture something like Mojoverse or Running Man or Thunderdome, um, but the players actually want to be there because they earn money for shooting people and killing things. And and they, they do they get shot and killed? Quite possibly, yes. That that sounds like a disincentive. Well, there's a risk reward. You know, you got to weigh your weigh your options there. Most people who want to be there are in it for the the quick cash. Huh. Neat. Now, so, so now, just just Jacob, just so you know, I mean, I know you already got the Kickstarter up, but the world is is round, so there's no actual edge. Are are you aware of this? <laughs> no. Oh. Wow. I mean, actually, yes, but. The World's Edge is so titled because it's the southernmost city in the world next to anything in Antarctica. And so they they kind of picture themselves as being at the edge of the frontier, as it were. Aha! Okay, well, that, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, I, I, I can buy that. All right. Now, uh, you do, so are you got any, do you have any unlockables or anything crazy like that? Yeah, for sure. So... Um, for every two hundred dollars we meet over and above our goal, we are working on additional three to four page supplements that are going to be separate from the main book, so they don't um, take up any of our extra time uh, getting the the core book out the door. And these books are focused on individual character archetypes. So, Cypunk has um, just loosely defined archetypes like your um, wheel jockey or your soul jacker, somebody who can do something really cool and the archetypes they just kind of focus on giving you some detailed descriptions about how these types of characters would fit into the setting what kind of skills and gifts they would use what type of gear they might have um and it just kind of gives you some some options and ideas on how to expand and to get that character to fit into the game that you want it to be oh okay so more archetype type stuff you are you writing all of it I am. Um, I do have some additional writers who are helping me on some other projects right now, and they may be coming in to write some of those in the future, some of the archetype books especially. But The World's Edge was written entirely by myself. Oh, awesome. Cool. Well, okay. All right. Uh, what, what gave you the idea? Smash TV is like an influence. I saw that on the... the... Yep, yep. Smash TV as well. Um, and then there was another book, um, Fields of Blood and Honor, that was written by... Um, a colleague of mine who's one of the Gamer Lifestyle um, subscribers to game design kind of subgroup. And uh, he wrote this book about arena combat, and I was reading through it, and I really liked the idea. And I thought, well, I could do that in Cypunk and just take it from the Middle Ages to the future. And uh, that's kind of where everything got its start. Huh. Well, I, you know, I, I saw the Smash TV, and then I thought, man, if only he'd been influenced by Battletoads, because oh. that's a good... Yeah, that's, Battletoads is good, to, good stuff. All right. Well, you just, you know, for the next one, Cypunk, Battletoads, I'm just... Well, maybe you should call it, like, Battle Frogs, just for... That would be oh. better. Yeah. There actually is a character, Dr. Tom, and I meant to mention this to you. Um, I have written a an NPC who's going to be in a web supplement who is a, a changeling, so he can change his own body shape, and he does turn into a giant frog and grapple people with his tongue. That and he's and he's in the arena. And he will be in the arena. Oh my! What's he? What's his name? Well, I thought I'd leave that up to you. Oh, I right. well, we we should go for Tom. I think. It's okay, just... Tom, it is. I am egocentric. Terrible. <laughs> he could be the doctor of licking. The top. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. That, wow, that's pretty exciting. I, I gotta say, everyone should. should okay. So, web supplement for World's Edge Arena, crazy fighter who has is turns into a frog. I love it. I love it. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Now, 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 now. Um, uh, we've we've talked about World's Edge Arena, but I, I gotta I gotta ask you a serious question now, Jacob. Are you ready for a serious question? Totally. All right. This this one's specially selected for you, Jacob. All right. If you okay. had to give up, if you had to give up Fudge the game 
or fudge the food forever, which would it be? Fudge the food. I eat it now and again at Christmas, but yeah, I don't make my living on it. Okay, I don't make my living on fudge the game either, but at least I have fun with fudge the game. You, you can have fun with fudge the food? I suppose I could have fun with fudge the food, but it's just not as it's not as tasty. Ha! Oh man, that's great. All right, well, so 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 you side punk rolls edge arena is up on Kickstarter as this comes out, and uh, and all the unlockables are even more archetypes of the thing, and, and it's not going to hold up the production. So that's really great. I, yep. I wish the best of luck, Jacob. I really I really hope uh, this this comes off for you. It's fantastic. Thanks, Doctor Tom. I appreciate it. You just watched the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, and we hope that you liked what you saw, yo. But if it was a big waste of your time, well, it's free, so that's not a crime. But if it was a waste of your time, yes, it's free, so that's not a crime.